I can't start the show looking like this. That's much better. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Film London, the show dedicated to lending you some filmmaking and lending you good. And today we're jumping back into Thor Ragnarok to tackle, well, I couldn't find a request for it, so we're just doing a Thor costume change effect. Hope that's okay. My God. Someone asked me to do Loki's costume change effect, but it kind of reminded me of this. Now in order to complete this effect, you need to head to filmlinen.com slash downloads, big surprise, and download the Thor Lightning Costume Change Pack. You'll also need to shoot your actor on a locked off tripod in their regular clothes, then of course, slamming down an umbrella, and then get them back into the same shot in their change clothes. Now for you guys out there that have After Effects CC 2013 and above, I've also included the project file for the lightning animation that I've done. In order to use this, you will need a copy of Saver. Now while I'm recommending things, I'd also recommend you get a copy of Red Giant Universe for the Camera Shake plugin, and I'd also recommend you heading to actionvfx.com and grabbing their free dust wave templates and their free burn texture templates, because we're gonna use both of them. Now you got all that? Well, let's get to work. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects, and as you can see, I have both clips set up and ready to go. Now, as you can also see, I have one clip with me in my sleeping clothes, and yes, this is what I actually slept in last night, and once I get to this point, I magically pop into my changed clothes, which will look even better if I add this sound effect. I almost don't need the lightning now. Oh, we could add it. Well, let's do that. Now, if you're using After Effects CC 2013 or higher, you do have two options for the lightning. One is the rendered animation file called Thor Lightning Final, or you can import the project file I created using Saber. Now, what's the difference between the two? Well, we'll talk about that a little later. So, let's assume you're working with the movie file. Let's firstly scrub along the timeline until my umbrella hits the ground right here. I'll then head over grab the movie file and drop it in at that point and change the transfer mode to screen. Let's then make sure it's positioned correctly. Now I have included a guide pick for where you need to have your actor in the shot, so just make sure you stick to that and the lightning will line up correctly. I added this because I shot mine in the studio where the room is limited and I had to adjust my lightning frame by frame to suit my placement. So use the guide to set up your shot and you'll be fine. So if we check out a preview, you can see the lightning bursts out of our umbrella, across the screen, and then the outfit changes. It looks pretty good, but now let's make it better. Firstly, we're gonna add some brightness and contrast to sell the lightning affecting our surrounding environment. This will help better hide the cut between both of our shots as well. So let's head up, grab an adjustment layer, and drop it below our lightning as we only want it to affect our footage. Let's also trim it to start on the first frame of our lightning. And done. We'll then head to Effect, Color Correction, and grab Brightness and Contrast. Now let's bump up the brightness a bit, and maybe lower the contrast. That looks pretty good. Now it's blown out, but not too much. Now I personally want to show that the light is starting from the umbrella and expanding out, so let's head up, grab the pen tool, and draw a mask around the umbrella, and maybe the surrounds as well, like so. Let's then hit F and feather it out around 100 pixels. Let's then hit M on the keyboard and bring up our mask path. Let's hit the stopwatch on mask path. We'll then skip forward until the lightning fills the frame a little bit more. Expand our mask a bit more. Then we're gonna skip ahead maybe one more frame until the lightning consumes the frame and expand our mask to consume the frame. Let's then head forward frame by frame until our lightning starts to shrink down, just like so, and we'll adjust our mask to shrink down as well. Just keep going until the lightning is completely gone, and then we're gonna trim the adjustment layer's end to end on that last frame of lightning. Next up, I wanna add a scorched or burnt area underneath my feet, just to sell the fact that the lightning has burnt the carpet. To do that, I'll be using a burn texture from Action VFX Free Burn Textures. I've already imported that in, so the idea is we wanna drop this in once our cut's made, and our screen is completely obscured by the lightning. This bit looks pretty good. Now that we have that dropped in, let's turn off our lightning layer just for a second. There we are. From there, let's make that burn texture 3D, and then we'll just adjust it into place to make sure it fits just under our feet. 
that looks pretty good. Now to better blend this into my scene, I'm gonna hit T and I'm gonna bring the opacity down on this one. That looks a bit better. From there, we need to mask out our feet so that it looks like we're actually standing on top of that burn texture. To do this, let's firstly turn off the burn texture, then head up, grab the pen tool, and we're gonna draw a mask around each of the feet, like so. All right, we've got one done. Let's head down to our mask menu, hit F and feather out around five pixels, and then we're gonna change the mask transfer mode to subtract. From there, we'll follow that up with the other foot and do the same thing. Feather it out and then hit subtract. Now, if we turn the burn texture back on, we're standing on top of it. It's that easy, guys. Let's turn our lightning back on. Oh, I just saw that our burn texture is starting at the start of our comp. So let's trim that to start where we need it to start. There we go. Now let's check out a preview of that. It's looking pretty good, but let's keep going. Now our next step is to enhance our lightning. While it looks cool, we can make it look cooler. Let's firstly start by duplicating it. That looks pretty good on its own, but let's head up to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, and grab CC Radial Fast Blur. We'll then keep it set to standard, move the center point up to mm, here, and then let's scrub to the first frame of our lightning and hit the stopwatch on a mount and crank it down to zero. We'll then skip ahead a few frames and bump it back up to 50. We'll then move forward to the end of the animation and bump it back down to zero. Nice. If we check out a preview, this is looking pretty good. But there are a few cherries we can add on top. One of them being a dust wave on top and the other one is a camera shake. And the camera shake is pretty much a must. Now guys, as far as these dust waves are concerned, I actually got these from Action VFX directly. So these are part of a paid pack. But if you head to the free section on their site, they do actually have a pack of free dust waves. So you can feel free to use those. The crazy thing is, all I did was just drop this thing in, position it into place, change the transfer mode to screen, and just, that's it. They are stupid easy to use. So let's finish this damn thing by adding some camera shake. Now guys, me personally, I'm going to use the Red Giant Universe Camera Shake plugin, and I highly recommend you guys grab this, even if you grab a demo, because it is truly awesome. So our first step is to pre-compose everything, so I'm just gonna hit Control A, that grabs everything, and then we're gonna right click and hit pre-compose. Once that's done, I'm gonna make sure I'm on the first frame of my animation. Yes, I am. I'm gonna head over to presets, type shake, and grab the camera shake legacy plugin. Then I'm just gonna drop that straight on our pre-comp. Now, first things first, I wanna hit the amount down to zero, and I wanna make sure motion blur is turned on, and I'm gonna hit that shutter amount to 60, just because I don't like the shutter angle at that higher rate. From there, let's scrub along the timeline to the point where I'm just about to hit the floor with my umbrella, right here. Let's add a keyframe on a mount, then we'll skip ahead two frames, crank the amount up to two. Then I'm gonna skip ahead, say four or five frames, and then crank the amount up to six. We'll then scrub along a few more frames until we're just about done with our lightning animation, crank it back down to three, and then once we're at the end of our lightning animation, we'll add one more keyframe and crank it back down to zero. The end result should look like this. Now guys, before we close this one out, I just wanted to cover using the lightning project file that I created instead of the movie file. Now, what's the difference? Well, for starters, if you want to, you can totally change any aspect of this lightning animation if you like by opening up the comp and playing with the layer masks. It's really quite easy to adjust if you want to do that. You can even go over to the effects menu and change the thickness of the lightning if you want, change the distortion. I mean, I don't care, it's your shot and it's your project file. Just be aware that there is a lot of frames to change here. But just adding a few lightning layers on the fly if you want to, just to match your shot, I mean, that's pretty easy. You just grab the pen tool and just draw a few more in. Just make sure you're on the right level for your thickness. So if you have CC, check this out and have a good play. But for now, that my friends, is another Thor effect. <laughs> Out of all those steps and you get something like this. <sighs> I can't start the show looking like this. That's much better. Let's do this. So guys, that's my take on Thor's costume change effect from Thor Ragnarok. Once I've gone and drawn all that lightning painstakingly frame by frame, it's a pretty easy effect to accomplish, right? But for now guys, that is my time. If you do have a request, 
throw it down in the comment section. I read all the comments and respond to as many as I can. And hey, if you are new here, why not hit subscribe? Or if you are subscribed, make sure you turn those notifications on so you don't miss a single film on an episode. We've got our other Thor Ragnarok effects right over here, as well as a playlist right over here. My social media crap is above my head. Check that community tab, guys. And until I see you again, keep learning.